Lights out. Hello. If a man would be invisible, let him go into a graveyard at the quarter hour before midnight and dig up from a grave a newly buried corpse. Then let him remove the coat from the corpse and put it on. And if he shall finish his dreadful work ere the hour of midnight striketh, then hath he gained the power to be invisible. <clears throat> but let him who doeth this... Turn it off, Gregory. Yes. For him, lot of silly nonsense. I said it was a lot of silly nonsense. Yes, sir, I suppose it is, sir. Mm. I suppose you believe it. <laughs> You're a fool, Gregory. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's impossible, you know that. May I go now, sir? No, you may not go. What are you hinting at? I'm not... not hinting, sir, at anything. You've heard of this superstition before, haven't you? Not quite sure that it is a superstition, sir. Well... <laughs> Get out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Invisible. Put on a dead man's coat. <laughs> that fool Gregory. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad, though, if... Invisible. The things you could do to people. Wouldn't be bad, would it? <laughs> Gregory! Yes, sir? Bring me another drink. Yes, sir. What I could do to people. A drink, sir. The evening paper just came, sir. All right, get out. <clears throat> yes, sir. Here's Mr. Ingram's funeral is in the paper tonight, sir. He was buried today, sir. And why not? He was dead. Yes, sir. I was sorry to hear that. I wasn't. I hated him. Man's dead, sir. And good riddance. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. Archibald Ingram, age 44, who died recently at his country home in Northport, was buried this afternoon at 3 p.m. in Lakeside Cemetery. Gregory! <clears throat> yes, sir? Gregory, do you really think there's anything in... Uh, In what, sir? In what the fellow was saying on the television, you fool. You mean about the dead man's grave, sir? Yes. Coat? No, sir. I think it's absolute nonsense. Give me a light, Gregory. Yes, sir. Francis. Don't mention my name, you fool. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. There's, there's no one around. And if you won't help, at least shut up. I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I can't help it. I'm afraid. Ah, everybody here is dead. Except you and me. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do it, sir. <laughs> what time is it now? Nine minutes. Before midnight, sir. Aha! I, I found it! Gregory! 
Yes, sir. Hand me down that heavy screwdriver. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Give me that axe. There isn't enough time. No, sir, you wouldn't do that. The axe. Want to put it on, Gregory? <laughs> Where are you going? Thought you'd run away. Thought you'd run away, did you? Ah! Thought you'd run away and pass the word to the police. My boss uh. is a grave robber, you're going to tell them. Oh. Well, you just oh. listen to me, my lad. You try anything like that and you know what I'll do. No, uh, no, sir. Do you oh. think the police will take the word of an ex-convict against mine? Why, I've got enough on you to hang you, Gregory, and you know it. So if you try anything... <clears throat> uh, no, sir, I, I won't tell, sir, I won't tell. Uh, you know you won't. Yeah. Because if I don't turn you over to the police, I'll... Uh. <laughs> Why, I'm going to be invisible, Gregory. Uh. You won't be able to uh. see me. Uh. Nobody will be able to see me when I tell you to lie and throw it out with my bare hands. I'll be invisible, and I'll murder you or anybody else that I want to. Now, get to work. And fill in that grave where some grave robber tore it up. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Get down in that grave. No, sir, I won't. Don't. Please don't make me get down in that grave, sir. And hurry up. Mr. Francis? Mr. Francis? Mr. Francis? Don't go away and leave me here. Mr. Francis? Where are you, Mr. Francis? Keep quiet, you fool. Can't you see I'm wearing the dead man's coat, Gregory? <laughs> <laughs> Still not used to it, eh, Gregory? <clears throat> Can I get you anything else, sir? Get your hat. My hat, sir? We're going out. <laughs> Did you... Did you say going out, sir? We're going to call on my friend, Hamilton. <laughs> oh, no, sir. Mr. Hamilton is going to die a most untimely death, Gregory. A most regrettable occurrence, Gregory. But my friend Hamilton made the serious error of treating me very badly. And I promised him that one day I'd get even with him. But you wouldn't murder Mr. Hamilton, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, I would, my lad. I'd have done it long ago. If I thought I could get away with it. But now... But he, he won't even let you into see him, sir. Oh, yes, he will, Gregory. Because you, my dear boy, are going to take me there. No, sir, I... No! 
And you're going to telephone my dear friend, Mr. Hamilton, and tell him that you must see him at once. You're going to tell him that you're in constant fear of your life. <laughs> Which you are, Gregory, aren't you? And you're going to make an appointment with him. No, sir! I won't be a part of the murder. Ha <laughs> ha! Fooled you, eh? Now, you'll do precisely as I tell you. And you know why you will, don't you? You'll be a party to murder or anything else I want you to. And if anything happens during our little session with friend Hamilton, if anybody interrupts us, why then, my dear fellow, you'll be found alone with a murdered man. Because I'm wearing the dead man's coat. So win, lose, or draw, you're it. Now, take this phone. Therefore, gentlemen, we should very much like a response to our letter of the uh, 18th, I believe it was, in which we informed you that we were about to send to you a shipment of the late... Excuse me, Mr. Hamilton. The right ahead. Yes? Hold on, please. What is it, Miss Parmalee? There's a gentleman outside to see you, a Mr. Gregory. Oh, yes. Yes, Miss Parmalee. Uh, ask him to come in. Have him wait, please. And you may go to lunch. Yes, sir. We do not wish to be disturbed. Yes, sir. You may come in now, if you please, sir. Ah, oh, Gregory. Come in, sit down. Yes, sit down, sit down. Well, I must say you are in a state. What's that scoundrel Francis been up to now? He's going to... I mean, I mean, Mr. Francis. Oh, there's, a, there's a draft in the window. Not too much for you. No, no, sir. Well, now, what's happened? Oh, I feel sorry for you, Gregory. I'm sure it's no secret to you how much he hates me, so... I suppose we're both in the same boat, aren't we? <laughs> Gregory, what can I do to help you? You sounded most upset when you called him a phone. Don't tell me he's been threatening you. Lock the door, Gregory! What did you say, Gregory? Lock the door! No, no! What's the matter with you, Gregory? There's nothing the matter with Gregory Hamilton! <laughs> Lock the door, I said, or I'll kill you too! There! There, that's better. Help! Gregory! I told you I'd get you. You sneered at me, and you mocked me, and you... Gregory! Gregory can't help you, Hamilton. Don't you recognize my voice? Uh, it's Francis, the man who hates you. The man who swore he'd murder you. The man that you wouldn't see because you're afraid. No, sir! Just stay where you are, Gregory, or... Remember, you're the one that's alone here with Hamilton. Ah, you're weakening, Hamilton. <laughs> uh, can't get your breath, can you? Can't see me. I'm looking right in your face, Hamilton, enjoying every second of your death scene. And you can't see me because I'm wearing the dead man's coat, Hamilton. <laughs> Gregory, come here, Gregory. Yes, sir. They're burying good old Hamilton this afternoon. Died of a heart attack, paper says. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Gregory. You weren't suspected in the slightest. Aye, sir. You conducted yourself very well indeed at the coroner's inquest. With me standing beside you, you were extremely convincing. Mr. Hamilton was an excellent help gentleman when I let myself out of his office. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most interesting things about this dead man's coat, you never know where I am, Gregory. Nobody knows where I am. Can I get you a drink, sir? No. You and I are going out. We're going to a funeral, Gregory. 
if I mistake not, the first of a good many funerals you and I will be attending. Hmm. Now, let me see. We check off Hamilton. Then there's Mackenzie, Beveridge, Carteret. Get your hat, I said we're late. <laughs> <laughs> Dead man's coat. Very, very useful. Well, very touching. Come on, Gregory. Where are you going, sir? Why, I'm going to watch them lay away my good old friend Hamilton. No, sir, you wouldn't do that, sir. Gregory. Why, of course I can do that. I want to be sure he doesn't get out. Please, sir, let's get away from this Wait place. Wait for me. I'm going in to say goodbye to my dear old friend. What's the matter, Ben? I thought I bumped into somebody. Nobody in there but him. Well, it, it sure felt just like somebody standing in my way. Well, if he is, he sure was invisible. <laughs> Speaking to me? Uh, sounded like it came from inside. No, it was me, sir. Gregory, you said? Yes, my, my name's Gregory. I was the last person to see poor Mr. Hamilton alive, sir. I see. I'm sorry. Excuse me. You locked the door? Oh, sure. Just put a new lock on just before the funeral. Good, strong lock. Nobody will ever get in there. Or out, either. Ben. I'm sorry. Mr. Francis, it's Gregory. Get that door open, Gregory. I can't, sir. It's locked. I heard him, you fool. Are they out of sight yet? Yes. Well, hammer on the lock. You hear me? Nothing in here to get hold of. Go to the car and get some tools. Try them. Hurry up. Right, there's nothing in the car, sir. Well, nothing. get something and try. Very well, sir. And hurry up. It's cold in here. Yes, sir. I'm sure it is. Let me take a last look at you, old friend. What did you bring? What did you bring? A file, sir. A file? You can't break the lock with a file. I, I thought perhaps the bar, sir. Well, get started. Get started, I tell you. No, sir. What? What did you say? I said no, sir. Gregory? I'm not going to try and file through those bars, sir. But you're, you're fooling, Gregory. No, I'm not, sir. But, Gregory... You're, you're not going to... Leave me in here. No, sir. Oh, I, I knew you were only fooling, Gregory. Come on and... No, sir. Go, Gregory! I... Now, you listen to me, sir. I must to hear now, sir. Gregory, listen. I brought this file just to ease my own conscience. No! I don't suppose you know what that means, sir. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Gregory. G good old Gregory, I, I am sorry. It's a bit too late for that now, sir. You're a murderer, Mr. Francis. And you're already planning other murders. Oh, I was joking, Gregory. And, and you're a grave robber, too. And you've treated me very badly. You had me sent to prison. You knew I wasn't guilty. Oh, I'll make it up to you, Gregory. Oh, Gregory, old friend. Think of how many years we've been together. And you've mistreated me, sir. You've struck me. And you've threatened my life. Oh, no. You can't leave me here, Gregory. So I've made up my mind that you've got to be punished, sir. It's your own misdeeds after all. You've nobody to blame but yourself. Oh, Gregory, please. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you. But you won't be making it up to Mr. Ingram, sir. 
whose body you robbed. Now, Mr. Hamilton, who's lying inside with you there now, sir? No, 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 no sir. <laughs> No, sir. No, sir. It says in the Bible... But you wouldn't have read the Bible much, would you, sir? It says, judge not that ye be not judged. Well, I'm not judging you, Mr. Francis. I'm going to give you a chance. Oh, Gregory, I know you was. Good old Gregory. Don't go crying out, sir. There'll be nobody here. There's nobody around for miles. And if and when they do finally come, sir, and they open this door, you won't be dead. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're probably reaching out through the bars now, sir. Give it to me. Give it to me, Greg. You might be able to reach it, sir. I... And then again, you might not, sir. But if you can reach it... And it doesn't break before you file through them bars. Very well then, sir, I was wrong. I'm not judging you, Mr. Francis. You judged yourself. When you put on that dead man's coat. <laughs>